Hey guys, welcome to another Block Spotlight. Today we're going to be taking a look at Red Power's frame motor. Now, this has been in Red Power for quite a while, but I haven't done a spotlight on it yet because we were waiting for Red Power to update. And now Red Power's updated, I can do my spotlight. Um, nothing has really changed with the frame motor, so I probably could have done it sooner but here we go anyway. Uh, this is the, the frame motor. Now you will see that on the front or on the side here um, you have a couple of markings. Now you can use those markings to work out which way the frame motor is pushing. And as you can see, we've got an arrow on the top there, and this is the face that's going to move. But sometimes that face is going to be covered up while you're setting up. And on the side here, you can see that the top um, part of this curve, this orange curve, has got a little white marking in the direction that the frame motor is going to turn. So if you bear that in mind, you can can use that to your advantage when you're setting this up and you can get the direction right without actually being able to see this front face. Now as for turning it, uh, if you just right click on this with a screwdriver as you can see it just rotates the block and it's just going to carry on doing that no matter which face you look at it's going to rotate it along that one axis. Now if you wanted to change which face is going to be moved you shift right click and then you change that face like so so if you were wondering that's how you move it around now the the block itself doesn't have an interface tool uh, so you won't be able to open it up and have a look at anything it does take power and if I find a battery for you, a full battery, uh, we can show you exactly what that's looking like when it's got some power uh, because it does change. Um, there you can see the blue lights come on so you can tell very easily if you can see the side face of these these blocks you can see that it, uh, it lights up when it's got power so if you're having problems uh, with with a machine check to see if your frame motors have got the lights on because if they haven't then you're out of power okay now how do you make this guy it's not particularly easy or well it is easy it's just uh, several steps involved in making this uh, to start off with we need some copper coils we need two of these uh, so that's going to be a total of eight copper wire and eight iron bars and two iron ingots to get your two copper coils. Now your two copper coils you put together with another six iron ingots and a blue alloy ingot to make a blue electric motor. Now this motor actually is a component in quite a few of the red power um, machines, some of the latest ones anyway. You use it in the kinetic motor as well and I'm, I'm almost certain it's, it's used in the blue electric engine which is a new engine uh, so these guys are becoming used more and more so if you make a few extra in fact they're used in the computers as well the disk drive if you make a few extra it's no big deal because I'm sure you'll uh, find somewhere to use them um, then you put your blue electric motor with a couple of brass ingots and a blue alloy ingot with another five iron ingots to get your frame motor. Now as you can see already we've used up quite a bit of iron so it's not the cheapest thing to make. Now the main thing that you use these frame motors with is frames and this is how you make a frame. We have a brass ingot surrounded by sticks and that will give you your basic frame. Um, then on top of that you can combine it with a pneumatic tube or a redstone tube and get your your frubes. I don't really like calling them frubes but tube frames. There you go. And 
they are just a frame with a tube in it which is uh, new for this version so that's a standard frame that is a tube frame and that is a redstone tube frame so all very clever looking very cool um, the fact that we can now embed tubes inside of frames is going to allow for much more compact and um, ingenious machines shall we say so this is a little demonstration of, of just what it does now I will probably do a separate spotlight on all the frames because how they interact depending on what covers you put on them and just trying to debug a, a frame machine would be quite handy but I will show that in a separate video probably for tomorrow um, but here we have just a, a frame on the top I've got some power going in here on the back now as this blue electric they do charge each other so because this one's got power this one's got power and I have this one here pointing right and this one here pointing left and actually this if you were going to make a um, some kind of extending um, apparatus or something like that this is how you'd want them set up because then no matter how far you go see that's not going to push anything further than that and this one can always be pushed back from here so that's always a good way to um, to make sure you're not losing grip of your machine if they were faced the other way you'd end up with a, a frame off in midair without a frame motor attached to it um, so there we go that's what it does now what we can do is we can attach some more of these just to uh, show you kind of what it's doing and you can move as many of these as you like I think that there, there is a quite a high limit but as you can see the the possibilities are endless with, uh, with these frame motors and occasionally you, you might get a visual glitch but um, they tend to clear themselves up after a while just need to to bear in mind that it is actually a visual glitch and otherwise they will work so there we go just to show you that it will move I think they'll move up to um, up to a thousand blocks I think is what the it's hard coded as in well it's not hard coded it's in the config file so you'll be able to change that um, but there we go that's the frame motor I will cover the uh, the actual frames another time I hope that's been useful for you uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time